Well, <clears throat> first things first, guys. I got absolutely draxed on earnings today. Both Grab and Alibaba released. Uh, Grab missed analyst estimates for revenue, which sent the stock just careening down in pre-market. And I listened to the tail end of the earnings call I was able to catch and some of the analyst questions. And it doesn't seem like this is necessarily reflecting what actually happened here in the business. Let me explain real quick. So their revenue guidance for full year 2024 is 14 to 17% top line growth. This quarter was 17% year over year in US dollar reporting, 23% in constant currency. So I guess the analysts were expecting more, but still the 17 number is the top end of their full year revenue growth guidance. And I think that the 23% in constant currency, if that would have translated to US dollars would have actually ended up beating the uh, expectations here. But I mean, that's a pretty big spread between what, what they, um, what they kind of lost there percentage wise, just due to uh, currency. So I think if you take that into account, this isn't a sign that the business has slowed growing. Uh, what this tells me is that people in, you know, the Philippines spending pesos, perhaps overall spent more money on grab, but it didn't convert to as much additional money because perhaps the dollar gained ground against that currency or any of the other ones. See, the problem is that they do have like half a dozen or so different uh, local currencies that people, um, basically they book rides in their local currency, they get food delivered in their local currency, and any of the, uh, the FinTech or payment stuff they do is gonna be in their own currency. So uh, when you have to convert that back for the reporting in US dollars, you can end up losing some if the dollar gets stronger versus those currencies. Also, their balance sheet remains exceptionally strong with almost 5.3 billion in net cash liquidity. They have negligible debt on their balance sheet and they went free cash flow positive in this quarter. So all in all, I actually find that this earnings release had a lot of positives to it. Um, their monthly transacting users were up Their Again, their revenue grew at the high end of their full year guidance for this quarter. So their full year guidance was topped out at 17% and 17% uh, is what they ended up achieving. Um, Again, profitability seems to be improving. I just don't see where it justifies a big sell-off, but hey, sometimes the market's gonna do what it's gonna do. If one was still in the accumulation phase, this bearish sort of reaction that it got could be a good opportunity to, again, increase one stake at a very low price. Now, this is interesting. In spite of the fact that the stock kind of traded flat, Bobble was probably my biggest disappointment today. Um, they had a big miss on the bottom line, but big gains in cloud. A lot of the articles led with the cloud part first. So it seems like the market more or less called offsetting penalties for those two things and just kind of kept it sort of flat. I mean, it says 1.4% gain on the day. Now, I would have actually expected on the big bottom line miss for it to crater, but here we are. And maybe it's just partly because it's already cheap and that they're gaining in their highest margin segment. So people like to see that. And people under already kind of had it baked into the price that the consumer was a little weak, especially in China, where they're having some economic problems and trying to stimulate the economy and such. So, OK, perfectly fine. But at some point, you want to see this actually start to go somewhere. 
And this may just be me and my, uh, maybe my impatience or something, but I am starting to like have it wear a little thin on this. And of course, there are people who have the argument that the stock's not worth anything and so on and so forth. I don't think I fully agree with that um, that point of view. And I certainly think, you know, there's also the thought that Michael Burry supposedly, um, you know, increased his stake from what I was hearing. I haven't actually looked at the 13F, but several people have mentioned this. So would Michael Burry be a buyer if the stock was worthless? Well, maybe he thinks there's some kind of a short term shift happening in the market and he thinks that Chinese stocks are going to just as a whole kind of rise because I think he's in a couple other Chinese stocks as well, not just Baba. So maybe it's not Alibaba in particular and it's just he's temporarily bullish on China. Maybe he thinks that with the economic problems they've been happening that we're kind of near a bottom on China. And then when that starts to come back, all of it will get a jump and he just wants to trade on that maybe. But all in all, a little bit disappointed here, but it didn't hurt me too bad. Now we're going to move on to something that really didn't disappoint me. So we got some news today with regards to medical properties trusts and with regards to steward first medical properties trust entered an agreement to sell some Colorado facilities. And just like the ones they recently sold in Arizona, they built them for a certain price back in uh, 2016 or something like that, somewhere in that area, and sold for more than what they paid. Would you look at that? So e each and every time they sell off a group of properties, it seems like they're demonstrating that they didn't overpay. And in the meantime, between the time they built, the time they sold, rent was collected. And so the overall gain from their business model is actually pretty good. Uh, now that was small. It was like an $86 million transaction or something. So not huge in the grand scheme of things uh, compared to what else is going on in the company, but still it's yet another data point. Now, also, we got word of a stalking horse agreement between a new potential buyer for some steward assets and steward. It's uh, North Florida, I believe, and it's to the tune of 400 and some odd million dollars. And I think that's probably what's actually moving this stock today. It would seem as though perhaps some of the early disappointments with the steward bankruptcy maybe are getting a little bit offset now, potentially. And it's maybe looking like being short MPW right now is not all that attractive a prospect as the head donkey himself has he not, not capitulated, but sort of gave up the game. They're not on the short list anymore for hedge eye. And, um, yeah, I feel bad for anyone that shorted when the stock was like three fifty, four dollars $4, whatever, when they were promising you, promising you it was going to go to zero. It's not looking like it's going to zero. So hasta la vista, baby. If you enjoyed this update, do me a favor and like the video for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, help me get to 3000 subscribers. I'm trying to do that in record time. Also, the most important thing you can do is go on to X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, and follow me at Mr. Macho. I'll link in the description there. My Discord's in the description. Cashflow Kings Live, we are having a roundtable discussion on Medical Properties Trust on the 17th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Link to that channel is in the description as well. It's where we do live shows once a week. We discuss stocks all the time. MPW comes up often, and as do many of the other stocks I cover on this very channel. Make sure you catch us every time. 
subscribe there too, just for good measure. Why not? Take it easy, everyone.